Thanks to the sacrifice of Rachel's brother, we finally hold the key to defeating the Gaussian once and for all. The Tidan orbital weapon is operational and under our control. Rachel is making final preparations to ensure the fleet's safety as we secure the Kartova site. Power and discharge protocols in the green, targeting and alignment data is suboptimal. We will require a ground-based scanner network to resolve firing accuracy or nobody will be safe out there. The Kartoba site is located here. The Gaussian fleet is holding their position outside the targeting perimeter. When they realize we have safely entered the site, they will advance and surround us. We will not have much time. Rachel, stand by to deploy. Roger that. Rachel and her team into the Kartova wreck immediately. Science officer responding. Time is of the essence. Expect Gaussian forces to arrive shortly. Rachel here. They're good. Final mission, guys. Get over to that Kartova. It's got like a little turret with like a satellite on it. I never actually looked at her craft that much. Actually, it has her name on it. Uh, what kind of ego do you have that you put your own name on your own vehicle? Like a personalized license plate. It's all good. And but the window's like right there. Whoops, I'm not falling anymore. Now get get your ass back here. Rachel here. Oh, here So, a little bit of an interesting fact. Um, the cutscene that you saw there is basically a kind of a recreation of the cutscene that was in Homeworld 1. Where's my base runners? I must have lost them. I think I lost them. Okay, I can guarantee you I lost them. Now I need to make fucking more base runners. Alright. Receiving. Uh, we're also gonna make another battle cruiser. I mean assault cruisers do I have? I have a lot of those. Carrier I'm just gonna make maybe rail guns. I don't know. Go for Capizi. I haven't quite decided yet. Form up with that battle cruiser. Capizi reading. Base right. runner assembled. Time's a wasting. Starting scanner boot sequence and setting for current atmospherics. Runner copies. We got some shit over here to eventually get as well. Fortunately, Rachel's inside the wreck, being antisocial. Battle cruiser operational. Battle cruiser copies. Control Battle cruiser operation, guys. PC, go ahead. What do we have here? Uh, just a cooling system upgrade. Nothing else, actually. I don't think that Capici is really repaired in terms of, uh, yeah. Weapon range systems currently active. Still has some heat issues. Scanner deployed. Receiving the data now. We need two more scanners to complete the matrix. Prep a scanner for deployment. Reading it. Why is this guy not actually going here? Marked. Deploy scanner. 
Are you stuck on the Capisi? Get out of here. Like, do these things not have a reverse? Anything. You gotta move the aircraft carrier? Holy shit, Capisi. Don't do donuts. <laughs> not on the desert. Go for Capisi. Yeah, just, I don't know, it's... Battle cruiser ready. It's just weird. Battle cruiser copies. Alright, so we're gonna have all of them follow my... Speed and escort that my guys. Confirmed. Escorting we battle cruiser. Carrier copies. Uh, we lost some bombers and stuff, you know, let's remake those. Be advised, an RU site has been exhausted of resources. Alert, hostile strike, strike fighter in circulation. This is strike captain. fighter online. PC out, scan for contacts. Hostile interceptor down. Bomber it's okay, we got, we, we got some we scanners. Got hostile on sensor. Scanner being received. Incorporating data now. One more scanner to go. Runner, go ahead. I guess we should make a, an anti turret AA somewhere. Reporting. Runner copies. Get it. Hostile threat. light attacks vehicle. Contact. The Gaussian are aware of our movements. Ground units detected. These motherfuckers. Scanner network in place. Great. Keep the network operational while I perform the scan. Crew ready. Ready. Set. Ahead full. Engage on site. Runner. New coordinates verified. Provide security escort for that craft. Move. Carrier out. Monitor for contacts. The MTL is showing positive materials drive. Alright. Hostile interceptor destroyed. Support ready. That's a lot of things around me. Destination marked. See. Scan complete. Preparing targeting matrix. Battle cruiser. Wait. Send message. You guys ready for space rail guns? Dude, because I'm ready for space rail guns. Enemy armor, please. Be ready to engage. Alright, space rail guns. Alright, so they, we're gonna we're gonna hold. We're gonna hold our fire. Ready for orders. Enemy rail gun firing on friendly. Send message. You know what? Fuck, fuck this. Go down here. Alert. Anti-air turret post destroyed. charges. Support crews are under attack. Immediate fire support on that position. Just run away. Make ready. Reporting. Alert. Our center post lost. Let's move. I don't know what we should use a space rail gun on. This is Rachel. Go ahead. It's a hard decision. It's got, it's got a pretty large AOE. Gaussian air units inbound. We don't want to just waste it, though. Combat alert. Support craft down. Reading. Ready like Capisi, you're not fucking helping here. Ready to give him hell. Ready, send. Attention. Alert, yeah. Hostile bomber on approach. Lazy motherfucker. Prepare to move. Ready with point. Alright, we should have some anti-air guys, right? Yeah. Destroy craft. Destroy. Alert, battle crew. Okay. Taking fire. Position marked. Proximity warning in effect. Hostile static. Locker down. We're moving. Artifact position authenticated. Identified our artifact. Uh, we'll just, I guess we'll just bring it in. Where's the uh, collect artifact? Salvage your copies. Salvage your up. Time's a waste. Oh, what? No, no. Everyone, I just wanted one guy to do it. Oh my god. One guy do it. We read you. Salvage your up. Yeah, you go get it. Alright. Alright, I want I want to railgun that guy. Artifact recovered. Authentication. Strikecraft damage upgrade. That would be kind of nice. Take it out. Yeah, that was awesome, guys. Reporting. We've detected something. Can you confirm visual? Gaussian air units inbound. 
Maybe we should broke up this. Yeah, no, it's already dead. Then we're gonna go on this guy. Alright, alright, you guys ready? You guys ready? Alright, we're all gun. Bam! We're losing some battle cruisers. Where's the carrier? Dude, just 1v1 him? Yeah. Actually, no, that's a bad idea. Dude, we're losing a little bit more here than I would have liked. I wanted to get and go after this guy. Listen up. Strike fighter approach vector dialed in. Attack vector dialed in. We're in the fight. A lot of guys there. Fucking carrier just like swims around. Alright, might as well just send everything we have at that. Losing some strike fighters though. Uh, I, think, I think he's almost done though. Armored vehicle is taking fire. The rail gun is taking effective fire. Alright, looks like he's done for. Do you feel expended? That's it for that guy. Just make battle cruisers for the end of time. Alert, rail gun down. Crew ready. Do you feel depleted? That is it for that carrier. Northern Kithid of Karak. Everything you have achieved, the battles you have won, they were preordained by the great Sajuk himself. To believe otherwise is vanity. His will is our destiny. But words alone will not stay your hand that much. Brought this darkness. You have chosen me. May the blood sand quiet the great slumber of such a We got a guy right there. Ready, set, runner. Hey, you guys want to bring the fucking railgun to bear? We, we won't even have to see him. Bam! <laughs> Dude, this game has everything I want. What can I say? Just lots of railguns. Alright, what do we got here? Yeah, they were good here. Alright, let's just heal up a bit. So basically, even better railguns. has long range missile strike capability. Make ready. See you site exhausted. Gauge on site. Support crews are under attack. Oh. Fire support on that position. That's not fair. Rachel call is at 75%. Be advised. Carrier repair systems online. Carrier warning. Heat levels are spiking. Reroute power to avoid system damage. All right. Let's go get him. Fleet group one assigned. Receiving 5 by 5. Attention. Uh, maybe we should actually, you know what? We should save this. I right, think about it. It's not exactly a fight we take lightly. All right. Uh, we got a flagship here. Weapon, stand by for cruise missile launch coordinates. See you deposit completed. Missile away. Hostile on center. Authentication pending. Enemy armor on approach. And bam! There you go. Enemy production cruiser has appeared in the AO. Battle cruiser is facing resistance. Position marker. I've never seen anything like it. The housing is seventy-five. We must engage with extreme caution. The Gelsian flagship has sustained minor damage to. Oh shit! 
Hull is at half. Weapon range systems online. Armor systems active. Our bomber is taking fire. The flagship has suffered significant damage. Oh, we may we may not win this. Rod, Rod, care. Yeah, another railgun. Only fitting that we finished off with a railgun. There you go. I have failed my people. My creator. The wrath of Sajuk will descend upon Karak in an unimaginable hailstorm of fire and death. Know that you will one day bring this fate upon us all. The truth of our origins is only now being revealed. Descendants of the great derelicts of Karak. We are all one. We are all Kushan. My brother said salvation lay in the desert. It's too early to know for sure if he was right. But one thing is certain. This is not the end. But rather, a new beginning. For us all. That's the end of uh, Homeworld Deserts of Karak, I guess. Uh, it's an uh, interesting game. Uh, kind of a new take. Uh, what do I think about the game? It's alright, I'll say. Why is it telling me Galaxian units airbound, inbound? It said that after, and I was like, what the hell? I think it kind of glitched out. I don't think it was actually supposed to say that. Um, it's alright, I'll say. Uh, I already told you my gripes with the UI. It's meant more for like a 3D homeworld game, not really a, a homeworld game such as this, which is like 2D. Like they could have gone with like a standard mini map and stuff like that. Who knows? I don't know. I don't think it really benefited it a lot in a lot of ways. Um, the depth in terms of the cruisers and combat and stuff like that, it's it's there. It's okay as well. You got enough to to keep to keep you going. There's a couple of factions apparently as well. Uh, but we only got to play as a uh, uh, coalition in the campaign. I haven't really touched a, mul touched a multiplayer at all. Um, and I probably won't touch it a whole lot either. I mean, this style of RTS game, I don't know. Not really as much of an interest to me as I would like. So this is made by a company called Blackbird uh, Interactive. So it's made by X um, relic devs who want to make another game. This is essentially their first game. Uh, Gearbox bought the Homeworld IP for like 1.3 million. It's originally supposed to be like a kind of like a spiritual kind of like offshoot of the Homeworld games. Uh, but then Gearbox said, oh, hey, you can use the, uh, you can use the Homeworld IP. And I'm going to just say that I don't know how much they're actually paying for the licensing, but I'm guessing they have to pay something, uh, because, uh, the game's actually really expensive, uh, all things considered, for what you're getting. Because uh, I, I felt that the campaign was, especially at the end there, was kind of rushed. Like, if you actually look, look at the map of the um, uh, the expedition, it, when we when we were at the, like, the halfway point was essentially where you get the, the, the two landers. You're waiting around the two landers to come and give you supplies on that, on the highlands there. So, 
Yeah, it's like, I, I don't know. Like, that was the halfway point, and then there was like two missions after that, essentially. So it's like, it felt kind of rushed at the end. Like, you just deal with the Sakala and then pretty much kill the, the last guy, so... It feels rushed at the end there. So, it, it, it was... The, the story was pretty good. The story was very homeworld-ish. Uh, if you know what I mean, it's very... Quite nice, actually. Uh, so, like, I like that part of it, about it, but... All the other stuff is kind of like... It's got its problems here and there, and it's not like... You know, the thing the thing that made kind of the homeworld games really great was the fact it was like a 3D RTS, so this is more like a, a top-down kind of 2D... When I say 2D, I mean like you think in terms of 2D, not in terms of like three dimensions in this game, so... Uh, yeah, so it's like, it's like I don't know what justified the price for this thing, but yeah. Uh, and they're, they are pumping out DLC for this thing, like a DLC machine, which I'll be sure to show you in a little bit after the credits play. Uh, which is one of the reasons I kind of like... I originally was not going to do this when, until it came on sale like much, much later. But then a friend of mine, as I told you guys in the early episodes, he, he, he had a spare uh, Steam key, so he just gave it to me. So and that's it. We've completed the entire game of Classic. Uh, classic I found to be, uh, it was pretty easy. I mean, I kind of rushed all the enemies at the end. The AI was kind of retarded. Um, I, d I just continued, to, like that was my campaign strategy, was just to rush at them with the carrier and all, like a bunch of heavy ships and not really give a shit. And it worked out really well. Uh, so you got like multiplayer skirmish and a bunch of other things and, oops, let's see what extras has actually. Uh, we're here. Uh, yeah, so shift and I think this is like Oh, I don't know what the hell this is. Gearbox software shift. Nobody knows what the hell that is. All right. Um, I'm going to just load up the Steam page. So the, all this is like in Canadian buckaroos. Um, ironically, it's actually not as much in Canadian as it normally would be if you translated the U.S. to Canadian. Mostly because I think that Blackbird is a Canadian company situated in Vancouver, B.C. Um, so they actually overrid the prices on Steam to make it only a little bit more expensive than you would see over the US prices. Um, but I can guarantee you every other region is probably gonna be something ridiculous. If Basically, if you're from like Australia or some kind of place that gets gouged a lot in for currency, I can guarantee you this is gonna be pretty expensive. Um, let me just tell you right now, it's probably about 10% more in Canadian than it is in US, considering our dollar is like 20% more right now, I'm sorry, 20% less right now. Um, it's it's c considered a deal, actually, uh, right now, if you're Canadian, uh, but it's still not great. So, the actual Deserts of Karak game, if I actually go to that, is, uh, let's see, okay, it's it's playable in my inventory, but it says here it's uh, $54.99. That's 50 bucks US. That's what it shows up in, in US dollars. And that's what I have right now. I don't have any of the DLC or factions or anything like that. That's This is a $50 game I just played for you guys. Probably not worth it. Um, I would say when it gets to sale like 30 or $20 and then the base game itself is probably worth it. Um, it there's, there simply just isn't enough content uh, in the game. It's not like there's like a whole bunch of maps. It's all fucking desert. Like, and there's no desert terrain doesn't actually matter that much for this game either, because it's all dunes and high ground and stuff. So, I mean, the game doesn't have that much depth to it when you when you really break it down, and that, and it's just sending ships and stuff at at each other. So, I don't know why it was priced this expensive. Like, Lee, I don't I don't know. And the worst part is you have this these DLCs, and this is this is the this is the really good one uh, that I looked at. This is actually not an add-on at all. Um, yeah, yeah, Gearbox. This is just literally lore and story. Oh, and the three, you get to see the 3D art in, a, in another program. Like, I'm, I'm not sure why the hell this costs $7 almost, but... I mean, I think even the reviews are not... Yeah, everyone's like bashing on it in the reviews, because like... No, it's still mostly positive, or never mind. I, I don't know why. Uh, but yeah, apparently they got it for free when pre-ordering. So you got that, um, you get, and then you get some fleet packs. So they basically created new factions, uh, which kind of have their own little play styles. Um, this one is like, this gives you Kiss Soban to multiplayer. Uh, you get a new carrier railgun battlecruiser. 
Yeah, they, they just added some new factions. That's what they were doing for the DLC. So it's $7 for like a new race, or so $8 for like every new race you want. Uh, the newest one, I think, is is it this one? Yeah, the the, the I have, I can't even pronounce this one. I'm going to try. So this one, uh, they actually made a new unit for it, and they did some other stuff with it. So you get blast drones and things like that. This is essentially what they've done with it, and I don't... Basically, if you're a huge Homeworld fan, I guess people will go for it, but I'm going to guess that they're actually not selling an incredible amount of these, because if you actually, like, eight reviews on this, like, it's just that they, they priced the, they priced out of it. Like, they priced most people out of it, and nobody's going to pay for um, this much for this kind of stuff, so. Um, that, that's what I'm guessing. I'm guessing it's just, like, not a lot of people necessarily buy things like Homeworld, so they're, like, trying to make up money by raising the price. Look at this guy. Uh, I don't. I, I don't know. I think that's why they're selling it for more. I don't ask me. I'm just telling you right now. If you're considering it, I would just like even the soundtrack. The soundtrack is fucking nine dollars. Like why? <laughs> it's like I. I don't know. I just feel it's kind of gougy, and uh, you know, they're kind of c making a lot of money off of, I think, uh, well, maybe not making a lot of money, because as I said, even, well, even then the reviews are like, a, a fair number of people bought the game, they're just, no, nobody's bothering with the DLC, because the DLC is not a lot of return. And you know, I don't know, as I said, Gearbox is involved with this, and I'm always suspicious when Gearbox is involved with anything. Um, so there's that. Uh, so, I'm basically showing you right now what you're getting, and I would, I still think it's worth picking up, I still think it was a nice campaign, it's just a bit easy. Honestly, I had more difficulty with the other homeworld games than I did with this one, and because I just you just saw me throw everything I had at them, I did it first time every time, and pretty much in the exact manner that you saw me doing it here, um, I just kind of threw my carrier and all my ships at it. They just do slightly more damage when the difficulty is increased in the campaign. It seems so things die a little bit faster, but yeah, no, it wasn't even close. I didn't even have to really think about anything. Oh, by the way, the 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 railgun upgrade that Karen. Um, Rachel was talking about was a uh, the railgun upgrade was a uh, it was good to do a focus beam which does more damage in a smaller radius. So I think I think the idea is that you could basically just like railgun the carrier. Like I'm not sure. I, I think if it had stayed more in the f in the fight, it would have maybe um they would have maybe done some damage. I think it was supposed to be a threat, but I just kind of came right at it. I'm like, I'm like, this is the strongest my fleet's going to be. Might as well just run at it. And then the carrier, my carrier almost died, but that's okay. I just put full power to armor and ran away. And then uh, he was not smart enough to focus it. And then like, yeah, he just died. So that was pretty much the campaign. Um, as I said, it was, it was okay. It wasn't, it, it wasn't great. Um, but and the multiplayer is just its own thing, so uh, I, I don't know if I'll be covering that. I probably won't. As I said, I, I, I didn't hate the game, but I, w I wasn't in love with it either. Um, I, and I just, I, 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 think, I think the main selling point is nostalgia factor for homeworld games, because there hasn't been another homeworld game in many, many years. Uh, almost 15 years now, I think. Um, so it's definitely there for the nostalgia factor of giving you that same homeworld kind of storyline and feel. And kind of like atmosphere, uh, but it wasn't in space. That's the only thing. So uh, the next thing I want to just talk about you guys briefly. So you may be wondering, um, am I doing Homeworld Remastered, and why haven't I done it yet? Um, I want, I really want to do that. And in fact, I'm even going to do Homeworld One because the thing that um, Gearbox did when they ported it, or they they remastered it essentially, is they kind of removed the painful slowness of Homeworld One. Uh, by the way, if you've never heard of me talking, the, the reason I've never done Homeworld 1 uh, on my channel is because I've always joked, uh, and I basically said, playing that game is like watching old people fuck in space. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's pretty bad. Uh, it just, it was too, it's too slow for me to do, like, Homeworld 2 was even kind of like on the upper, sorry, on the lower edge of like the things I would want to do in terms of like speed of games because uh, it's just way too way too slow like you spend basically like 15 20 minutes getting anywhere and that's like an entire episode just traveling to your your objective destination so it would have been a shit ton of editing and stuff and so I just kind of never planned on doing it uh, even though it was a game I liked and then they, they released this remastered version and the remastered version is actually they use the same engine for both one and two and so 
the engine is essentially based upon Homeworld 2, and Homeworld 2 was a lot faster in terms of like resource collection and gathering and stuff like that. So it's actually feasible for me now to do Homeworld 1, I, f I, I feel. Only problem is, uh, I have I have Homeworld Remastered. It's the formations are literally useless, and there's some bugs within the campaign. Um, so I figured that they they have been promising a big big patch. Apparently, like a couple of devs have been working on a gearbox. I don't know what the hell they do. They, they're taking a, they're taking their sweet time, but they've posted screenshots and videos and stuff showing that hey yeah we're doing something. We have it working, but they haven't released anything yet. So I think I think what they're doing is they're planning on making one large patch for this whole thing. And also the multiplayer for that game is in beta, so they're probably gonna bring it out of beta, and then that's that's gonna be their big thing for the game, and then they're probably just gonna leave it. Um Homeworld Cataclysm didn't come with it, uh, because apparently some lost source goes or so, code or something. To be honest though, I've actually never played Home Homeworld Cataclysm. Uh which is the expansion pack for Homeworld One. Uh but I'm I'm pretty sure they'll do something about that at some point. Maybe some kind of like twenty dollar DLC, I'm sure. Like Gearbox won't Gearbox won't pass that up, I'm sure. Um, anyways, when that major patch comes out, I'll, I will be touching upon Homeworld One and Two again, um, just the remastered versions, because I, I just I would like to play the, as I said the best possible version. I have played a little bit on my own, and it's very different in a lot of ways. It's the same story, which is I think the main point. I don't mind a bit of variation in gameplay. It's just um, I like the plot and the same gameplay elements to be there, but it just everything handles very differently. So you have to keep that in mind. It's kind of like I don't know. I, I don't have a comparison for that, but um, it, it's it's just it's just very different. So I would love to show you guys that at, at some point, but uh, we're we're gonna be patient on that so we can get the best possible experience. I mean, I mean, it's it's been LP to death, I'm sure, on YouTube already. If you're really into that, I'm pretty sure someone else has done it. That's uh, at least semi competent. Uh, no, I'm not making fun of anybody, <laughs> but. Um, as I said, we'll, we'll go into it uh, at some point as well. Uh, and and as I said, if you can wait, then we'll we will play together the the best possible version of it. I figure there's no rush. Um, I mean, technically the game's been out for 20 years or something. Technically, so you know there's no rush. Let's play the, Let's play the real, real, but remastered, remastered version kind of thing. So that's it. So that's all I got to say about this game. So uh, I hope you guys like the LP and. Uh, Thanks for watching. Take care.